Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and one of the recent episodes I reviewed this uh, son of uh, Zigbee radar sensor or radar based motion sensor which you can see on the well it's the left of the two and in that review video I said that I need a little bit of time to do a real comparison of how it performs especially uh, how it perform performs compared to the old uh, Zigbee PIR sensor which you can see on the right and now I had the time and I managed to go through a couple of scenarios. So I think I have a you know, very good idea how this uh, sensor performs and in which scenarios you should really choose these instead of a PIR sensor. And since the release of the original review video, the product has been released. It was released on the 16th of October. So now we know the price as well. So at the moment it is 1490 US uh, uh, from the IT website. So it is roughly about 50% more than the old PIR motion sensor. So let me summarize the difference between these two devices. So first of all, the PIR motion sensor, as the name suggests, this is a motion sensor. So it is really designed to detect motions. And I find that it performs a little bit quicker and a, a bit more reliable than the personal uh, or the radar sensor in terms of detecting motion. So these motions, uh, I mean like when you enter a room or you walk into a space, you walk into a corridor, you walk into a room and you want, for example, a light to turn on. So for those options, I think the PIR sensor is still really, really good. It performs slightly bit better. It is cheaper, while on the other hand, it's battery operated. But being battery operated also means that probably it's easier to place in places where otherwise it would be difficult to get power or get it wired. The other thing that the PIR sensor is not going to do is once you sit down and then you are not moving much, then most probably it's going to detect no motions after some time. So in my case, it was like 45, 15 minutes, but let's say after a minute, it would just turn off. So if you want uh, to use it to keep the lights on in a room once you sit and you know watch TV or you know do some readings or just using your phone, most probably that light is going to turn off. And that's when this radar presence sensor comes on because, well, as the name suggests, this is more of a presence sensor, not so much as a motion sensor. I think it still does a fairly good job at detecting motions, although you are going to see in the, in the sample cases, there were cases where I would have expected the radar sensor to pick up my motion much uh, sooner or much closer than it actually did. But in other cases, it was able to pick up motion where I didn't even expect to uh, you know, pick up motion. But regardless of all these, what it really does well and it, where it really performs is detecting presence. And it detects presence by able to measure the really subtle movements like, you know, just nodding your hand, you're moving, uh, so nodding your head, moving your hands a little bit, or just the fact that you are breathing and your chest goes up and down. So in uh, my study scenario, when the sensor is really close to me, it would never detect me not being in the room or not sitting in front of the computer, even if I'm, you know, just staring at the screen and watching a YouTube video or something like that. This uh, performance and the sensitivity a little bit falls away once you are in a bigger room. So I tested it in my living room as well, where I, I was much further away from the sensor. And uh, in those cases, it stopped detecting presence in you know, in after a couple of minutes. So I think there is a sweet sort probably for this sensor. So if you want to use it in a bigger room, you probably have to buy multiple sensors or strategically place the sensor so it is closer to the area where you are, you know, usually sitting. So for example, in a living room, make sure that it's pointing to a couch where you usually sit and watch TV if you want the sensor to keep the lights on. The old PRS sensor doesn't have any settings and for the radar sensor I was using all the default settings so the sensitivity was set to medium and the detection duration was set to one minute. I tested this unit in three different scenarios so I was testing it in my office which is a really small uh, you know study or office room where I usually work and I tested it in a hallway which is like a fairly long hallway so I can see how far it detects me when I you know approach the sensor and finally I was testing it in the living room so again when I'm further away from the sensor maybe sitting in a couch not doing anything like just watching tv and I wanted to see if that still detects my presence. If you have some other ideas that I should test some other scenarios, just let me know in the comment section and maybe I can revisit this testing with some new scenarios. 
So the first scenario I tested was in my office or in my study, which is a fairly small room. Um, you can see I set the Go GoPro to wide angle, so it can pretty much cover the whole room. It's about like uh, two meters by one meter, and the sensor was sitting on top, well, both of the sensors were sitting on top of this display, which is about a meter away from me, so or uh, three feet. And you can see that for testing, I was using my Sonoff Dual, and then or it has two indicator lights and the left indicator light is the PIR sensor and the right indicator light is the radar sensor. So I have like four scenes uh, created in uh, the evening application. So whenever motion detected either from the PIR sensor or the, or the present sensor, the light comes on and when no motion or no presence is detected, then the light goes off. So we are going to use that to, you know, just to indicate when uh, these sensors go on and off. So the first thing I was testing is uh, what happens if I just um, sit very still, I just look at the, you know, the screen, you know, checking emails, and I only use my right hand to operate the mouse and to scroll the wheel. And you could see that uh, when I was this sort of motionless, then the PIR sensor would turn off after 50 seconds. And I was using this uh, setup for, you know, many, many days, and I never seen the uh, the radar sensors turn off. So this is such a close distance, then I guess it can pick up my breathing, you know, my, you know, chest going up and down. And that is enough for the sensor to detect presence because as I said, as long as I was sitting in front of the computer, no matter how still I was, whether I was just watching something or listening to other guys in uh, you know, conference call, it was still showing that I am present. So, so for small rooms or wherever you can place the sensor close to yourself, it will reliably detect presence and you can use it to, for example, keep the lights on. In the next test, what I did, I was, uh, you know, left the room because I wanted to see how long it takes for the sensors to go off. And it was, you know, more or less the same. The PIR sensor turned off after about 45 seconds and the radar sensor turned off after 58 seconds. So it was, it was more or less the same. And then I was coming back into the room. And as you can see, again, the PIR sensor was quicker and the radar sensor came on about two seconds later. So that was more or less the same again. And as I said in the beginning, the PIR sensor was a little bit faster. Next, what I tried is uh, I tried leaving the room again, but, and then I also thought that, uh, would it make a difference if I closed the room behind myself? And turning off the sensor was pretty much the same. So maybe it took a couple of seconds less. Uh, here I measured like 45 seconds by the time both of the sensors gone off. And then when I came in and I opened the room, the radar sensor was able to detect uh, motion quicker than the PIR sensor. And that's probably because my body was blocked by the, the door. So the PIR sensor was probably not able to pick up the heat from the body as, as long as the, the door was you know, pretty much open. But it's a big surface, so the movement of the door was picked up by the radar sensor. So that also shows that the radar sensor is not necessarily looking at body heat, so uh, a different motion would be able to trigger it. For the next scenarios, I move over to the corridor, and for testing, I mounted the radar sensor and also the PIR sensor on a wall, so I just put it on a piece of wood, uh, and the camera was right next behind them. And if you look at the footage, there is a uh, stairwell uh, which is uh, opening on the right, and that's about like eight meters or 26 feet, uh, sort of like midway in the image. So that gives you an indication how far I was, uh, you know, when I was moving, moving in and out of the, uh, the scene. So what I did first is I was approaching the sensors and I was approaching the sensor from the um, I mean, I have like two big openings between the kitchen and the uh, uh, and the living room. So I appeared about like eight meters away, or as I said, 26 feet. It was quite interesting because for the PIR sensor, it detected me about like five, six meters away. So that's 19 feet. And the radar sensor took uh, much more time to pick me up uh, about four meters, uh, which is 13 feet. And I was thinking that mm, this doesn't look really good. So I repeated the scenario a little bit later again, because uh, I thought this was just too, you know, close distances for these sensors to pick me up. Maybe there was uh, some, you know, sunshine coming in from the, from a window that 
created some confusion for the sensors i'm not really sure for the next test uh, what i did is i was you know walking away from the sensors and i wanted to test again how long it takes for both of these to go off and it took about like 50 20, uh, sorry 54 56 seconds for the pir and the radar sensors to go off so that's pretty much the same results what i have uh, experienced in the study as well and next what I did is I was approaching the sensors from a further distance and as you can see the PIR sensor was able to pick me up uh, at about 12 meters away, 40 feet and for the radar sensor it was picking me up about 8 meters so 26 feet away so it, these are definitely greater distances than uh, the previous example before and maybe the fact that this is a really long corridor makes the sensors a little bit less uh, I don't know, predictable to pick me up, but that's only a suggestion from my part. And I have seen on, you know, some of the sort of um, the screenshots that they put for the PIR sensors that, that they also recommend mounting the sensors uh, up on the ceiling looking down. So that could be a better option for a longer corridor to properly detect motion. And finally, I moved over to my living room and I placed both of the sensors next to, next to each other along with the GoPro, which did the, you know, the recording. And as you can see, the sensors are looking into my living room. And for the testing, I was sitting in the couch, which is about uh, five meters or 16 feet away from both of the sensors. So for the first example, I was coming into the room and just like in the study case, both of the sensors came on at the same time. The PIR sensor was a little bit quicker, but the radar sensor was also there uh, after about one or two seconds. And at this point, I was trying the sitting test. So as I said, I was just sitting in the couch. I was, you know, scrolling Facebook or something, which is pretty much what I would do if I was just watch TV and, you know, not really make much movements. And the PIR sensor turned off after 52 seconds. So that's about like 45, 50 seconds, uh, just like in all the other cases. And the radar sensor kept on going. And I thought that the radar sensor would just keep, you know, reporting uh, that the presence is detected. But in this case, after about four and a half minutes or four minutes, 40, 47 seconds, it actually turned off. Um, so that was interesting because uh, I thought it would still detect my presence, but I was clearly just too uh, far away for the sensor to pick up my, probably my breathing and the very, um, you know, small amount of uh, movements that my, you know, thumb was doing on the phone screen. And then I was standing up from the couch and uh, pretty much the PIR sensor and the motion sensor picked me up, uh, picked up the motion at the same time. As the next step, I was coming back into the living room, but again from further away. And that was quite an interesting test as well, because it took much longer for the radar sensor to pick me up. But uh, I mean, I was clearly in the room, so I'm not really sure why it took the radar sensor that long. But again, the PIR sensor was very reliable in terms of detecting motion, and it was able to pick me up as soon as I sort of moved into the view. And at that point, I wanted to repeat the sitting test. So I was sitting back on the couch. I would did the same, you know, mobile telephone scrolling, not really moving much. And uh, this time the PIR sensor pretty much predictably turned off after 53 seconds, but then the radar sensor also turned off after one minute and 35 seconds. So again, it I was pretty much sitting at the same position, but it even took uh, less time for the uh, radar sensor to detect no presence at all. And then I was trying to see what is the amount of movement for each sensor uh, to sort of wake up and detect my presence and motions again. So I just started to sit up and uh, then the PIR sensor came on. But interestingly, again, it was not enough for the radar sensor. So actually I had to stand up for the radar sensor to pick me up. And there was one final very interesting scenario that I also wanted to mention, and this is related to the corridor scene. So I had my bathroom or the toilet just behind the sensors and the cameras. And then what I noticed that even if I was like, you know, behind the radar sensor, but the door was open and probably the radar sensor was able to pick up my motion within the toilet through some reflection from the, uh, from the walls or something, 
then what I noticed that I was still in the bathroom behind the sensor, but it was still able to pick up my motion and it reported presence even before I moved in front of the sensor. So again, if you are noticing these uh, fringe behaviors, then that's probably some radar reflection that the device is able to pick up, especially if that reflection is fairly close to the sensor. To summarize the results again, I would say that uh, if you want motion detection when you or go into a room when you pass by a corridor and you want to control lights. I think the PIR motion sensor is still a, be a better option. Well, first of all, it's cheaper. And what I found is that it has uh, a fairly reliable uh, detection um, or motion detection. As long as you don't expect the motion detection to uh, keep uh, detecting your presence, if you are sitting stationary, then the PIR motion sensor is good. And if you have scenarios where you want to keep, for example, the lights on when you are working at a desk, when you are watching TV, you need the radar presence detector because instead of detecting bigger motion, it can focus on smaller motions like your subtle movements, your breathing, and it is able to keep, for example, lights on as long as you are sitting in a place, you know, just moving, the he moving your head slightly or your hands or just as I said, breathing, and uh, it will still detect your presence. So I think that will be my review of these two devices or the comparison of these two devices. If you are interested in any of these sensors, there are going to be purchasing links down in the video description below. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.